fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high o silver, the Lone Ranger. Ranger rides the trail once again as the famous Lone Ranger urges his great horse Silver on to new adventure. Listen to those silver shod hoofs racing over the hard packed roadbeds of yesteryear. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver, old boy! The tin old fellow! Tell us waiting for us on the trail ahead! The central figure in tonight's story is Andy Beecham, a hard-working prospector typical of the Old West. Andy had searched for gold in desert and mountain, in good times and bad, under burning sun and freezing snow. Because of his courage, he had met the disappointments of the years, continuing his hunt for the precious metal in spite of all obstacles. When he was just about to give up hope of ever finding the yellow gold, he suddenly struck it rich. He uncovered what promised to be a profitable vein of ore, filed his claim, and built a small home on the property. As our story begins, we see Andy and his wife entertaining a guest, Rod Ramsey. The prospector has been telling the story of his good luck, and as we join them, we hear some of the details. So after years of knocking around, Ramsey, I located this place. It was just what I'd always been hunting for. They tell me that all this section is hard rock. How about that, Andy? That's right. Hard rock mining. That's the tough kind, ain't it? Yeah. Takes a lot of capital for tools and things. Gotta blast the ore out. You was lucky to have the capital to work with. (laughs) Didn't have. You didn't? I don't know what we'd have done, Mr. Ramsey, if it hadn't been for Mark Nelson. Who? Mark Nelson. He lives down the valley. He loaned me the cash for the job. How'd he come to do that? Well, that's his business. Oh. Andy, there's two kinds of men you can't trust. Horse traders and money lenders. What about gamblers? Mary, I... Uh, oh, I didn't uh, mean mm. Mr. Ramsey. He's an honest gambler. <laughs> Don't mind me, Andy. I quit the gambling game two years ago. You did? Oh, I'm glad to hear that, Mr. Ramsey. I always said you was far too fine a man to make a living gambling. I quit for good. But about this money lender, I'm kind of sorry you went to him, Andy. Shucks, why not? As soon as the claim begins to pay, I'll return the money I borrowed. Uh, I hope you can. I wish I'd known you needed cash, but of course I didn't. I didn't have no idea where you and Mary had gone to after you left the flat. (laughs) Funny being together again here, ain't it? It sure is. What brought you here anyhow, Mr. Ramsey? Well, to tell the truth, ma'am, I come here to pay a debt. Is that so? I didn't think you had any debts. What a money debt, Andy. Oh. There's a man that once saved my life. I was sitting in a faro game one time, and crooks tried to hoodwink me. We shot it out. Well, this stranger stepped in, took my side in the argument, and got me out in there half alive. Gosh. For weeks, him and an Indian friend of his took care of me, and finally got me on my feet again. I promised them, too, I'd never gamble again, and I won't. What are you figuring to do if you meet them? Tell them that it's been two years since they saved me, 
and I ain't handled a card since then. Who are the two men? If they're in these parts, I should know them. There ain't many folks around here I don't know. The Indian's name is Tonto. Tonto? What's the other man's name? I don't know. What do he look like? Can't even tell you that. He has a powerful white horse that he calls Silver. And he wears a mask over his face. The horse? <laughs> <laughs> no, ma'am. The white man. I heard him spoken of as the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger? Sakes alive. We've heard stories about him. I always thought he was sort of a... Uh, well, a legend. Yeah, we never figured he was really all that he's cracked up to be. Andy, let me tell you this. He's real flesh and blood, and no matter what you heard about him in the way of doing great things, it's true. My sake's alive. I'd sure like to get a look at that hombre. Maybe you will. Do you think he's around here? That's what I heard. That's why I've come here. Reckon that's Mike. Who? He's working for me. I ain't young enough to do much in the way of drilling and blasting anymore. Now, that you, Mike? Yeah. Evening, Miss Beecham. Evening, Mike. How's things look after this day's drilling? Just about the same. Here's samples of what we got today, boss. Ah. Look like we're getting close to the mother load? Nope. Don't look no better than before. Oh, gosh. I'm hoping you ain't made a mistake on your sizing up the land, Mr. Beecham. Well, you're getting paid anyway, ain't you? Sure. Only it'd be hard for you if you didn't hit the pay dirt soon. I know. Well, there's the samples. You don't mind if I go to town, do you? Why should I mind? Well, I just mentioned that I was going, that's all. We should hit the mother load one of these days, shouldn't we, Mike? Can't tell. Night. Night, Mike. Andy, there's something about Mike I don't like. I know, Mary. He's a queer sort. Never since he's been here has he wore a smile. Always that same surly look on his face, like he was doing you a favor to work here. Well, I expect don't set too well with him, do most of the work, and see me own the mine. Where'd you get him, Andy? He just drifted in looking for work after I settled here. I needed a man bad, so I put him on. Can you trust him? What do you mean, Rod? Just that. Wouldn't it be easy for him to be taking gold ore out in the claim and telling you he hadn't got to it yet? Mm, I suppose it would, but, well, I gotta trust him. Maybe it's from having been a gambler that makes me distrust a lot of men. But I didn't like his eyes. In a game of cards, that man would bear close watching. There ain't but one thing would keep him from ringing in sleeve cards. And that's being afraid of getting caught. Great Scott. Did you hear that? That voice. What was it? Silver. Did you hear it? Called his horse Silver. You mean? I mean that was the Lone Ranger. <laughs> I need your help. What? Matter? I've been following Black Mike. Huh? He just left the mine and headed for town. What him do there? I don't know. But I do know that he told old Andy Beecham that the mine hadn't started to pay yet. Him tell that? Yes. Not, not true. I know it isn't true, Kimasabi, but Andy Beecham doesn't know it. What we do? We've got to check on Black Mike and see what connection he has with that moneylender. You go and do that. Uh, me get horse. Here, white fella. You'll find Black Mike heading toward town. If you ride fast, you'll get there ahead of him. Then you can watch him. Tonto! Uh, Tonto do! I'm going back to Beecham's place. An old acquaintance of ours is there. Who? That? You remember the reform gambler? What him name? Ramsey. Oh, him good fellow. He's looking for us, Kimosabe. And I think maybe he'll find us. Ah. Uh. He's one man we can count on to help smash this moneylender and the crook known as Black Mike. That's good. Now then, Kimosabe, on your way. Get him up, white fellow. Come on, fellow. We're heading the other way. Mike, the miner employed by Andy Beecham, went to the home of the moneylender, Mark Nelson. He was unconscious of the fact that his movements were observed by Tonto. At Nelson's home, he made his report on the condition of Beecham's claim. The mother load is just about in plain sight, Nelson. 
I had to do some fast work to cover it after the last blast showed it up. So, <laughs> my investment won't turn out bad at all, will it? When do I get paid? You've been getting paid all along by Beecham, haven't you? Yeah, but I work blame hard for that cash. What about my share of your profits? Plenty of time for that, Mike. Plenty of time. Uh, wait and see how much I profit. I ought to get a share of the claim. Maybe you will, Mike. Maybe you will. I'll think it over. You're a good man, a big help to me. Yes, sir. Uh, what are you going to do now? Take over the mine. Huh? Yep. Now is the time I get paid off. I don't see how you figure to do it. That's the difference between us, Mike. That's why I'm a planner and you ain't nothing but a worker. But all you done was lend them enough cash to work the place for a time. Sure. Well, how does that give you the claim? I got a mortgage on it. Shucks. All he has to do is pay back what he owes you, and you'll be able to do that easy. How? Just tell me how. Why, from his gold. What gold? He ain't got none yet, has he? No, but he will have. I told you to let me know as soon as the mother load was in sight. Yeah. All right. Now we know the mine is good, don't we? Sure. Now we know it's worth me buying in for the couple of hundred dollars I let him take. Gosh, yes. Very well. If it hadn't have been worthwhile... I'd let him keep it and owe me the money. Collect from him some other way. Now, however, I want that mine. But I don't see how... The, the paper he signed promises to pay me my cash on demand. Yeah? I'm a lawyer, see? I've got that paper all signed by him in front of reliable witnesses. It ain't my fault if he don't read what he signed. Now, tomorrow, the claim will be mine. How come... Because I'm demanding that cash the first thing in the morning. Well. And the agreement calls for the money to be paid in paper currency. Savvy that? He can't rush the work on the mine, get gold and pay me off. Not on your life. It's got to be folded money. I'll give him till midnight tomorrow night to pay it. My agreement says he's to have 12 hours notice. And that's all he gets. 12 hours. There ain't a chance to get the gold refined in that time. This ain't nothing to getting all the cash here for you. I know it. <laughs> so he can pay. Well, then he... Sure, he turns the mine over to me. Pretty slick. I own it, you see. Being as I own it, he can't work it no more. Hold on, Mr. Nelson. Well? Your scheme won't work. What's the reason it won't? Rod Ramsey. Who? Ramsey. He's a gambler from Beecham's old diggings. Well, what about him? He's visiting Andy. He's got considerable cash. What about it? He might buy up Andy's mortgage from you. Can't buy what I won't sell, can he? He might let Andy Beecham borrow the money. Oh, no. That wouldn't work neither. I'm a lawyer, I tell you. I draw that agreement up in good shape. But how will you get around it if Beecham gets cash from Ramsey and pays you? Easy. The agreement states that the cash has to be paid with profits from the mine. Oh. <laughs> Savvy? And he can't do that till he gets profits. Hardly. So you got him beat any way he turns. Yes, so. <laughs> Tomorrow, Mike, I'll take over the Beecham claim. And I got a share of it coming to me. Wouldn't surprise me none of you had, Mike. <laughs> You're a good man. A good man for me to have around. <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of tonight's thrilling Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scene, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. You will recall that in the first act of tonight's Lone Ranger drama, Andy Beecham told his friend Rod Ramsey that he had borrowed money from Mark Nelson to work his claim. Tonto, following Mike and his hired man, learned that he was secretly working for the moneylender. Tonto learned also that Nelson planned to foreclose the mortgage he held on the mine and that Beecham was almost sure to lose his claim. The Indian reported these facts to the Lone Ranger, and as our second act opens, we see the masked man and his companion riding toward the Beecham home later the same night. You didn't learn where Nelson kept that paper, did you, Tonto? No. That's too bad. I'd like to have a look at it. Uh-huh. However, we can be pretty sure the paper's just what Nelson said it was. He's too shrewd to leave a loophole for Beecham. That right. There's one man who might be able to help us, though. Who that? Rod Ramsey. I'm going to see him right now. Him sleep in Beecham House? Yes. I think he'll be glad to see us. <laughs> Why do you laugh? <laughs> Him plenty glad to see you. You save him life. Stop here. Oh, Silver. Oh, I tell him. Oh. Stay here with the horses, Kimasabi. I'll go the rest of the way on foot. Uh, me, me wait. Voice. Keep your voice down. There's no need to awaken the Beechams. Friend, the one man I wanted to speak to. I've kept my word to you. That means a lot to me, Ramsey. Look, I came here to ask your help. Whatever it is I can do for you, count on it. Thanks. I want you to help me save the Beecham's gold mine and put a schema where he belongs. Save it? What's the matter with it? The mother load is right at the surface now. But Beecham is due to lose his claim tomorrow. How's that? Steady, Ramsey. How can he lose it? It's his, ain't it? Tonight it's his, but tomorrow Mark Nelson plans to foreclose the mortgage on it. Why, that... If Andy Beecham could have a week or so of time, he'd be able to pay off that mortgage. But he won't have. Just tell me what I can do, that's all. Keep away from this house tomorrow. Let Nelson do just what he wants. Beecham will have until midnight tomorrow. Before then, you'll do your part. Rod Ramsey listened to the Lone Ranger and agreed to do as he was directed. He left the home of his friend the next morning without explanation. And we hear Andy and Mary as they try to account for Rod's sudden departure. I can't figure why he left so sudden, Mary. It's got me beat. I'm sure I don't know, Andy. We didn't offend him, did we? Not so I know of. Maybe that's him come back again. I'll go see. Howdy. Oh, why, Mr. Nelson. I'll step right in if you don't mind. Come along, Sheriff Purdy. Howdy, Beecham. Uh, hello, Sheriff Purdy. We don't get to see you very frequent. I reckon not. I trust everything's all right with you, Sheriff. So-so. I'm here, Beecham, to call your attention to a paper signed by you and witnessed by the Sheriff and a deputy. Oh, that. Sure. I'm hoping to be able to pay you off real soon, Nelson. I figured uh, I'd hit pay dirt long for this. But can't be much longer now. No, Beecham, you're right. It can't be much longer now. In fact, it can't be later than midnight. You don't mean tonight. That's exactly what I mean. You promised to pay my money on demand, Beecham. And so I'm here with Sheriff Purdy as a witness to make that demand. But gosh, Mr. Nelson, if if you just give me a little more time, I'm I... sorry, but I can't do it. I'll have to have the cash by midnight or I'll take over the mine. And remember... This house goes with it. He can't do that, can he, Sheriff? I'm afraid he can, Beecham. No, but I... And that ain't all. The paper calls for the cash to be paid from the profits of the mine and handed over in paper currency. Don't forget that. You... You mean after... After all the work here, we gotta lose our gold claim? You was willing enough to take my terms when you needed cash money. Now live up to them. Uh, Mr. Nelson. Well? Suppose I strike the pay dirt today. Then I could fetch the gold to you, couldn't I? No, sir. The agreement states I'm to be paid in paper currency. Uh, suppose I can borrow the paper money somewhere? Won't go. Gotta be profits from your claim. That's what the agreement says. Then the whole thing was just a scheme to take our claim away from us. Call it what you remind her. Only pay up before midnight or hand over the deed to the property. I've given notice. That's all I'm required to do, ain't it, Sheriff? I reckon so, Nelson. 
If I'd call it a doggone ornery trick... It ain't for you to call it anything. You just see that the law is enforced. That's all you gotta do. I look for you by midnight, Beecham. You got 12 hours. Come on, Purdy. Good day to you. Oh, Andy. Swindled. Bunk clean out of our mind. Oh, Mary, I've been a fool. I've been a doggone trusting fool. I never thought them terms was like that. I, I don't see anything you can do, Andy. There ain't a thing I can do. Not a thing. He's got me licked. Not yet. Who was that? There at the window, a masked man. You're not licked yet. Huh? Your friend Rod Ramsey's going to help you. Uh, where is he? Who are you? Never mind that. Now just listen to what I tell you to do. The Lone Ranger explained his plan to old Andy Beecham, and the hopes of the miner rose higher as he listened. He knew what the masked man had done for Ramsey, and he had faith that he too would be helped. It is night, and Rod Ramsey stands before the door of Nelson's house. Well? Nelson? Yeah? I'm here to have a little talk with you. What about? I'll step inside if you don't mind. I do mind. Well, it's too late. I'm already inside. What do you want here? Just came Nelson to tell you that you ain't a chance of getting Beecham's mind. What's that? You see, before he has to pay the cash to you, you got to show him the paper he signed. That's the law, ain't it? I'll show him the paper all right enough. That paper is Beecham's note, and uh, you got to return that note when he pays the cash. Let him show the cash. He won't need to, because you see, Nelson... You don't have the note. Who says so? I'm saying so. What more do you want? Blast you. You look like you knowed what you were saying. I should. You can't know. I put that paper away safe. I'll produce it when the time comes. Uh-uh, no, don't no, shake no, your no. head that way. You remember what Mike said? Huh? He wanted a share of the claim. Well, I... You wouldn't make no promises to him, and he knows you for a double-dealing rat. Well, you mean... Mike's looking out for himself the same as you are. He knows Andy Beecham's an honest hombre. He knows that Beecham is on the level. If that dirty coyote sold me out... You don't think I'd come here and bluff you, do you? I, I don't know. How could I benefit by it? You know where you put the paper. You can find out soon enough if I'm bluffing. Go on, Nelson. Call me. I'll have the law on Mike. If he stole that paper, he'll go to jail for life. I'll soon know. I'm afraid it isn't there, Nelson. You stand where you are. Hold on. Don't make a move. Put that gun down, you crazy fool. Stand still. I ain't taking no chances. I'm standing still. You needn't think you're going to try and steal this paper. You won't find it. We'll see. It ain't there, Nelson. Besides, you ain't the nerve to shoot a man anyhow. They'd hang you for it. Stand still now. Don't you make no fast move. The paper was right here in my desk. Better make sure it's still there. You can't collect without it. If it ain't, I'll throw Mike into jail. What's the matter? Can't you find it? Uh, there it is. <laughs> That's a funny one. Uh, here it is. This is the mortgage and the note and the whole thing. Better make sure it's a real thing and not a fake. It's the real and all right enough. Uh, there's the names of the sheriff and the deputy all signed to it. Now what have you got to say? You better have it with you when Beecham comes, because I understand he's been getting profits from his mind. I'll have it all right. I'll... Well, what the... Who shot that lamp out? Who's here? Look out, Nelson. You might get hurt. Someone's in this room. Out of my way, Nelson. Who are you? Stop. Stop, thief. Get a light. Where's the match? Here's another lamp. I got a match here. Hurry up. Someone's here. He shut me aside. Now, there's your lamp. Now, stop your yelling like that. Where is he? Where's he gone? Let me get a shot at him. Looks like he went out the window the same way he came in. Them papers. Them papers is gone. He stole them. My mortgage. My claim on Beecham's mine. Yeah, they're sure gone completely, Nelson. And look, there's something on the table in place of them. A bullet. What's this? What's this mean? A bullet. A silver bullet. I know. <laughs> so that was it. <laughs> oh, golly, that's a good one. Stop laughing. <laughs> I'll have the law on him. You're in on it, too. I really didn't know why I was to show you the poker face and talk like I did, but I see it now. You brought out the paper and the masked man took him. It was Beecham. It was Beecham that done it. I'll have the law. I'll get the shelf. I'll jail Beecham for life. Stop your noise and see who's at the door. Never mind. 
Come right in. We want to know what all the yelling is about. Sheriff! Sheriff Purdy! Arrest Beecham! He stole... Hold on, Nelson. Beecham! What are you saying about Beecham? He stole the papers! He stole papers from me! That ain't so. Oh, when did he supposed to have done that? Just now! Just a minute ago! Uh, you're local. Looks like your greed is finally touched in the head. Andy Beecham has been with me for the past hour. We've been on our way here to see you. According to my figuring, he's still got time to pay you that there cash money. I don't want it. I won't take it. Oh, yes, you will. You take it and turn over them papers according to the agreement. But I... He ain't got the papers. <laughs> They're gone. Gone? They were stolen. Well, that puts a new light on things. You can't expect Andy to pay you the cash without you handing over his notes, can you? He hasn't got the cash for mine, profits. I'll take these claims. Oh, I reckon not. You ain't the only one that knows the law around here, Nelson. But I tell you, the papers were stolen. Hmm, you got a witness to that? Or maybe you're just using that as a stall because you ain't got no papers. Sure, I got a witness. This man was right here at the time. You seen that man come in and steal the papers? Sorry, Nelson, but I didn't see a doggone thing. Why? That's the truth, Sheriff. I didn't see a thing. All right. You show the papers, Nelson. You get your cash money. Profit from Beecham's claim in paper currency... Just like what the contract calls for. Me speak? Oh, oh, yeah. 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 Tonto. oh, me speak now. Go ahead. How long take feller get paper money? Well, now that I've found the mother load showing, I ought to have the folding money in a couple of weeks. Oh, maybe then paper come back. <laughs> Looks like you'll get your papers back, Nelson, when it's a mite more convenient for Andy to pay up. I've been cheated! I've been robbed! Come on, Andy. There's nothing I can do if Nelson ain't no witnesses. Gosh. Yeah. I'm doggone glad it's worked out like this, Andy. That old skin flint got what is coming to him. Mike confessed that he was working for Nelson all along, aiming to cross you up. Yeah, but Sheriff, this bag I said uh, had cash in it, uh, uh, just between you and me, there ain't no cash. Uh, just yet. <laughs> Andy, uh, just between you and me, who the Sam Hill cares? Oh. Oh. Come on there, Silver Old Boy. We're heading for the coast. Hey, The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.